Hey, welcome back to The Past is Alive. Tonight we're back doing everyone's favorite series, opening some good old-fashioned 1990 tops, and the never-ending thrill and excitement of looking for the legendary Frank Thomas, no name on front, error card, and also Ken Griffey Jr.'s second year gold cup card that is skyrocketing in value as of lately. Absolutely insane. This card in a PSA 10 now is about 800 bucks. So this is one we'll be looking for as well. And it's a series I try to do monthly. I've got a bunch of these boxes stocked up. I actually bought a couple of these off of a guy named Richard on Instagram. He had a few sitting around and um, sold those to me. So these are, and it's not a cello box, but it's like the weird hybrid, like the cello pack wrappers with the normal amount of cards inside. A legend has it, the Frank Thomas no name on front cards came from or ended up in Michigan, went on a pallet on one pallet only, and those are the only ones you could supposedly find the error card on. Other people said they found them in factory sets, uncut sheets. There's so many different rumors circulating about this card, but um, always fun to open 90 tops regardless. So I will continue to do so, and maybe in the process, pull a PSA 10 Griffey, or maybe finally someday come across that card. So we got a good bit of these to go through tonight. I appreciate you guys being here with me to hopefully partake in the glory of finding this elusive error card. But let's get down to it. Maybe we'll try some gum while we're at it. 16 cards per pack. Let's see what we can find. This gum is going to be pretty fresh from being sealed up and not in wax packs. Hopefully we'll find ourselves a nice Ben McDonald rookie card. Maybe a PSA 10. And the PSA 10s of those are going nuts. Graded cards in general. Wax boxes. Everything has gone absolutely nuts. I was saying to somebody the other day, I never thought I'd live to see the day where 1990 score boxes are 50 bucks. But that is what they are going for now. Surprisingly, these boxes are still relatively cheap for uh, potential payoff of a Griffey PSA 10 or that error card. You can still get these for like 50 bucks, sometimes even less. Depending on what they are, wax, cello, rack pack, they fluctuate all over the place. The glossy sets, which have also skyrocketed, but what hasn't skyrocketed as of lately? It's been tough trying to figure out the last few remaining Turn Back the Clock Tuesdays and finding product in boxes that aren't ridiculously overpriced, like most of them seen. Tomorrow night we'll be opening 95 Zenith. One I've wanted to do for a long time. Those boxes are around 40 bucks. Oh, well, now they're like a hundred. So pretty crazy. Mike Scott looking for blacklist variations as well. They can be easy to pass over. John Fishman's in the house. Is any are Chris Sabo's cards going up? His PSA tens might be going up. Paul else is afraid John is going to do Tops Kids for a turn back the clock Tuesday. Now I am I'm leaving that open, man. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to uh, deny it or admit it. What's up, Fitzy? Pat Tabler, Gary Carter, Fernando Valenzuela. But uh, hopefully we don't have to resort to 92 Tops Kids, Paul. And these packs are always great for just getting all kinds of a mess everywhere. I love it. Robert Setliff says, I want to see at least five Thomas rookies tonight. Robert, thank you very much, man. Good to have you with us. I appreciate that. I hope that we can see a couple. That'd be pretty awesome. And tonight, too, I promised everyone, what was that, almost a week ago, that I was going to give away some cards in honor of Craig B. Not the imposter Craig B. either, but the actual original Craig B. Um, has now gone into hiding and into retirement, which upsets me. So, um, But in an effort to try to get him to go back on... Uh, his commitment to retiring. I said I was going to give away some cards. We've got a Ripken, 82 Donruss, Boggs, 83 Fleer rookie card, Glaber's update rookie, and Randy Rosarena. His 2020 Bowen rookie. We're going to give those away at some point here. We'll probably space them out a little bit, I think. Sorry that your resolution is bad as I film this on my Metro PCS phone. <laughs> CNM Collectibles in the house is damn it, John, as my friends from Survivor said back in 1984. 
after tonight, the search is over. Frank was right before our eyes. Thanks for the wit. <laughs> CNM Collectibles, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that. Always a pleasure to have you with us. And I don't think Corey is with us tonight. Go figure to that. But check out CNM Collectibles. They've just hit 2,000 subs. So congrats to you, CNM. The most recent video is doing some... Uh, actually, was it 2020, 2021 tops? Um, I guess that was. Six days ago, 2021 tops. Check out CNM Collectibles. Help him continue to grow his channel. There is a link to it. Check out Chad. And also, if you missed out on the Bowman Break advertisement, I think we have five spots left of the great Bowman Break coming up here in several weeks. Ten years of Bowman. Should be a lot of fun. There's five spots left. Those boxes have really, really gone up. 92 Bowman boxes. Over 400 bucks now. 93 Bowman boxes. All 93 stuff is through the roof, especially SP. But uh, 93 Bowman boxes are close to 300 bucks now. Ernie Witt. I don't remember that card. No sign of really anything too great yet, but the nice thing about these is that they are search proof. Roy Smith has a Mandela effect. I was kind of thinking that too. Lots of Mandela effects in 90 tops. Any tops definitely holds the mysteries of the universe. Mike Smith leading off. Ted Power. We all know my favorite Ted Power card of all time. My only and my favorite at the same time. The dual booze signs. Actually, I always say dual booze signs. One's a Winston sign. And Jim Abbott. This card is listed for crazy amounts on eBay right now. If you check that one out. People just are just conjuring errors out of thin air. Henderson, kind of like that Naughty Don Russ, Ken Griffey Jr., the decimal point error. <laughs> People are listening for $10,000. Or Hershiser, Felix from in, Neil Heaton. And there's a nice one, though, Barry Bonds. Even, like, a Bonds PSA 10, that's probably 70 bucks, maybe a little more, if you send them in. But I think, I don't know, 10s, I think, are pretty tough in this set because of that border. It can be pretty tough. But um, I'm hoping we at least see one Frank Thomas rookie. Tony Gwynn, all-star card. The wrong Ken Griffey. Carlton Fisk, Greg Vaughn. Andrew says, I got one of those cards your wish has been granted from the movie Big from 1990 Tops, and now I'm 12 again. Pretty cool. Oh, that is awesome. That movie's great. I haven't watched that in a while. I need to now. Jeff Treadway, Ozzy Guillen. Alan Anderson having the time of his life. Robert says, I still think we'll see at least five. Well, I hope so, man. I definitely hope so. That would be awesome. RTS, what's happening, man? How crazy would that be? To find that after all this time. Tim Tuffle. Like he just got done uh, smoking a marijuana cigarette in the dugout. Robin Young, all-star card. Dan Billardello. Lots of funny photos in here, too. Paul Gibson, speaking of funny photos. Not a lot of stars yet, though. Mitch Williams looking like he is straight out of the Civil War. Mr. Beast, if you pull two Ripkins in the next pack, you will get the no-name on front. How crazy would that be? Andy Allenson, Rich Yet, and finally a different promotion for that sweet Tops hat. Alex M., what's happening? <laughs> that was supposed to be a joke, John Fishman. That is why I called it that, man. I guess people don't get my humor sometimes. 9330 says, You still haven't found the name of Frank Thomas? Eh, it's a tough one to find, man. It definitely is very tough. Bob Ojeda. There's Glenn Davis. Nolan Ryan. Nice one there. So, Bonds and Nolan Ryan, the best names we've seen so far. Corey Snyder. Jeff Pica. Alomar. <laughs> Touche, John. Touche. Greg Gagne. Bob Boone. Lacrosse Sosha. Ken Hill. Ken Griffey Jr. is within our grasp. Check it out. Very nice. Yeah, I saw people on eBay listing like lots of this card, like 50 of them for like almost a thousand bucks. Crazy. Like between 10 and 20 bucks a piece this card is selling for now, which I never thought that would happen. But, um, 
very nice. The supposed quote unquote scab card of Griffey. Nice one too, though. And PSA tens are eight hundred bucks now. They are skyrocketing. So one of the uh, nice affordable boxes where you can still have a big payoff. There's quite a few of those still out there, especially in the junk wax era. NCJ, Sammy, what's happening, you guys? It's making a big uh, mess here. James J says, just can't believe the junk wax is finally becoming worth something. It only took 25 years. I know, that's, that's crazy how that worked out, huh? Rick Mahler. Like I said, 90 scores, 50 bucks a box now, like... I'll start to get worried once uh, 91 Fleer and like 91 Don Russ start to exceed like $30 a box. Pascal Perez. There's Quisenberry. <laughs> Is this one of the special 87 Tops variant boxes? I hope so, man. That would be crazy. Seeing them referring to uh, the one box that I opened. It was a wax box, I think, where like randomly it was like four or five 87 Tops cards just came falling out of the middle of the pack. <laughs> that box was searched so bad. It was horrible. Dave Steve for Joe's Card Corral. NCJ says, in 2030, you'll wish for sure you kept these. I probably will, man. Tony S says, I bet I have 50 of that Griffey. Yeah, you could get close to a 1000 bucks for him now. Steve R says, I'm sure eventually, once boxes get more scarce. That's what I've been saying, too. The more people that rip these open and everything else, obviously. Supply and demand. Simple economics that uh, these boxes will go up. But I have a big shelf full of wax that I've kept probably because I'm a hoarder I guess Criterium Racers in the house is Goonies never say die just like John's no name on front Lee thanks man appreciate that check out Criterium Racer if you have not subbed him you've been posting a lot more videos lately I don't have uh, Corey in here to help out with the link so I'm going to post the link to your channel Lee try to get you some more subs if I can find it on here I always have a hard time finding your channel there we are. And uh, I'm going to give something away here in a second if you guys can hang on. Criterion Racer, 72 subs. Check him out. Nice Goonies reference. Let's uh, let's, get, let's do a giveaway right now. Let's give away, uh, before we go any further, how about we give away Randy Arozarena. His 2020 Bowman. Let's give this one away shall we now to partake are you kidding me <laughs> well, never mind we're going to have to prolong this I literally had everyone's name saved in the wheel of names and the crap website deleted all of it it literally went back to the default page and I lost everything so forgive my false advertising we'll put that off for next time that is how we do it around here. Robert Rathen, what's up, man? Yeah, we'll postpone that until tomorrow. <laughs> but everybody excited for nothing. A Andrew says, hope you're doing well, man. Retro game night soon. Andrew, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I definitely want to do retro game night. I just, I, I can't figure out if I want to try to do it live or just do it standard. Let me know what you think. I know we did it live last time. Andrew AF is the one that helped me set up uh, the Tony 2 stream last time. That was pretty awesome. I definitely would like to get into doing that more like once a week or something like that. There's so many cool games that I'd like to go back and play. And I feel like I'm not going to go back and play them unless I do something like that where I'm like forced to do it weekly. Maybe we'll have that replaced. Replace uh, Turn Back the Clock Tuesday with that. Thanks, Andrew. Hope you're doing well too, man. And look at that! Right on top of the pack. Well, that sure just ruined the entire thrill of the rest of these packs. Frank Thomas rookie card surfaces. This one's a little bit off center. But uh, don't you touch that dial because that error card may be awaiting us in the rest of this box. Very nice, though. Still love that card regardless. Big Mac. Legendary Frank Thomas rookie. Here's Clemens. Really sucked the fun out of the entire search for this <laughs> in this box. Joe Alford, don't know how it calls me. We'll we'll shift uh, we'll shift the search over to the Ken Griffey Jr. PSA 10 now. How about that? Does that sound good? James Jordanson told you you'd find it. You did come in right at the right time, man. Call that. Dirk Remington's in the house. The four four dollar and twenty cent super chat. Very fitting. Says get yourself some Taco Bell, Dirk. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. It was actually a Taco Bell a couple hours ago. It's pretty sad whenever um, 
you'll leave your house just to go to Taco Bell. I don't know if that means, or if that signifies that I have a problem. I don't know. I don't think it's a problem. It's it's more of a lifestyle thing. Dirk Remington, appreciate that, man. Check him out. He just posted a video a couple days ago. Always um, in his never any quest to find cards on the road. Give him a sub. Let's see if we can find ourselves another Frank Thomas without his name in the block. Dave LaPointe, Lee Guterman, Charlie Huff. Really struggling to lift that leg up there. And you'd be struggling too if you were born in the um, Mesozoic era. And John Fishman says these current prices, Don West looks like a visionary. Thank you, John. Yeah, Don West, he is really, uh, he's really laughing at all of us now, huh? Felix Jose, love me some Don West. Ozzy Smith, I need to get uh, get him on this channel and rip a box or something with him. Like Don West could sell. 92 tops kids to anybody on the planet. Guy is an icon. We need to get him on here immediately. If anybody has connections to Don West, <laughs> let him know we, we want him in here. Tony S says they got they got to be thinking we're smoking crack with these prices in my Don West voice. Yeah, those infomercials are amazing. Robert R says need more Big Macs. Yeah, we saw one so far. One Big Mac, one Frank Thomas, one Griffey. To rule them all. And one very pissed off Sparking Anderson. I'll never get tired of that card. That'd be a good one to get in PSA 10. Frank Robinson, another elusive one from this set. There was somebody that needed that card to uh, finish their 90 top set. And I sent it to him, but it took me like four boxes to find that one Frank Robinson. Don West sold me some cocaine once. <laughs> that was Aileen. Rene Gonzalez. I don't remember that card either. Saberhagen. Seven easy payments of 20 through 99. Chris and Chris, I used to buy from Don West late at night. That's awesome, man. I was like too young back then. I definitely used to watch him, but didn't have a credit card or anything. It's probably a good thing. I probably would have bought uh, a whole bunch of crap off him. Dante Bichette. Some of those, like there was, there was one that John Fishman sent me that was like him selling like a five thousand count box full of nothing but error cards, and it like wasn't that expensive either. It seemed like a pretty good deal. That would be something I definitely would buy. <laughs> John Juan Bell. Jim Corsi, Mike Heath, there's a Greg Maddox. First time seeing that one. Gary Thurman, Ken Daly, McGuire Galassi. Chris and Chris, as I got home from work, used to wake my mom up. I worked as a busboy. Nice. Yeah, we need to definitely need to get him on here. That would be so cool. I feel like he wouldn't be opposed to it either. <laughs> I'm laughing. Don West selling Beanie Babies. <laughs> he can sell anything, man. Paul L says the sports radio or the local sports radio host loves to brag about how he buys all this garbage from QVC. Yeah, QVC is pure garbage, huh? Mark Davis. Kyle Abbott rookie card. There's Steve Finley second year card. Kyle Ripken. I know Corey just bought this one. His never ending quest to get Ripken PSA tens, and it's a PSA ten of this is like seventy bucks around there. Woody Herzog just bought his rookie card, and it's pretty nice. It cost me about 40 bucks, 57 tops. I'm going to try to cross off some more of these uh, Hall of Fame rookies that are really not too expensive, very affordable. QVC sells the best pot stickers. <laughs> Ron Coe could sell any crappy kitchen appliance. Chris says, I still have many of the cards I bought because of Don West. I'm both proud and ashamed. I believe it, man. That would make for a good video. Cards I bought off Don West. Mike Fetters, Orozco, Wade Boggs, Jerome Walton. Jerome Walton was definitely in a screw-down case in 1991. Gonzalez rookie card. Another decent one from this set. That and the Sosa, Bernie Williams. Kurt Manwaring, Doyle Alexander. Kind of an awkward pose of him. Brooke Jacoby, Crime Dog, and Donnell Nixon. And we got a different promotion now. I feel like... Most kids had that binder at some point. There's a, a few things. If you're an 80s kid, you had one of these um, very nice binders, or you had the big white baseball card 
uh, collector kit, collector case, whatever you want to call it, that bent all your 89 Bowman cards. And um, there's a box, too, that was pretty popular. I feel like anybody, you go to their house and they have cards from when they were a kid in like the 80s, early 90s, they all have like the exact same like random boxes, unique boxes, or the binder, or that storage ball that ruined all your cards. I need to make a video going through all my childhood cards. They're all still in my parents' house. Most of them are, at least. And it's so it's a rookie card. Very nice. So it's a rookie. And the uh, nice thing about these packs is there's no gum stains. Chip Hale, Jim Leland. Christmas is Mets for life. Darren Jackson, Lance Johnson, Mitch Webster. David Jones. What's happening, man? <laughs> the 89 score set. Destroyed, man. Absolutely destroyed. Tony Gwynn. Because when we were kids, we played that game, whatever it's called. Walt Weiss has a certain name to it, but you would um, take your cards, put them up against the wall, line them up, and you'd take another card and throw it into them from five feet away or ten feet away. Just whip the cards into them. <laughs> and my very first set that I ever had, 89 score, really, uh, really felt the wrath of that game. Destroyed all of them. The box like is horrible looking. My very first set, and uh, I didn't take care of it obviously. And Eric had this set too, but I'm pretty sure he convinced me to use my set and not his. So if you look at his 89 score set, I'm sure it looks nothing like mine. So I don't think my dad was too keen on buying me <laughs> anything else after that. I think there were sets at least. Todd Froworth, Lloyd McClendon, Jerry Brown. Tim Rock Reigns, Jeff Reed, Seitzer, Omar Vizquel, second year card. Eddie Murray, some nice names in there. Doug Desenza, that's kind of a Mandela effect. I don't remember ever seeing that card before. And I feel like it's kind of unique, too. It's like the contrast on it and whatnot. It's, a, it's an interesting one. Another Mandela effect to add to the list. Plenty of Mandela effects, but nothing... No Mandela effect that I've come across as great as Berenstein Bears. It was not Berenstein, it was Berenstein. And everybody knows it on this entire planet, but you can't find one piece of merchandise that says Berenstein. They all, it all says Berenstein. Hint, hint, parallel universes. Look at that sweet vintage top shirt. I'm going to track one of those down. Gary Reedus, Drew Hall, Jeff Russell, CLG, what's up, man? Tim Drummond, Tommy Helms. Wally Whitehurst. Mark Guthrie. Still no sign of Scott Scudder's short print either. <laughs> Jeff Hamilton. Sid Fernandez and Tim Belcher. Collins Card Pulse is just opening up this set is fun. It, it, it is, man. I still like opening these, even though I've done it a lot. <laughs> Jeff the Dead says Mandela Effect. I was sure that nasty hag I was with last Friday. <laughs> was actually a stunning beauty. <laughs> that is great. <clears throat> Chris and Chris collecting cards as it was Berenstein Bears and the Matrix glitched. Yeah, it definitely was Berenstein. My mom used to read those books to me like every single night or every single day. And it was it was Stan and Jan Berenstein. It was not Stain. You cannot blame this on bad memory. I I saw what I saw, I know what it was, and I think the rest of us are in agreement. Now I have met some people that say that uh, it was Baron Stain, but I don't I don't trust them. I think they might be in on it. Mike Aldrede, Lonnie Smith, Henderson, Greg Hibbert, and Oral Hershiser. NCJ says another article about an LCS that burnt down near Paradise, California. Stan Card Collector or Stan Stan Card Collector 204 says you find Jim Abbott. We did see a Jim Abbott a while ago. Those were going nuts on eBay. <laughs> Due to a an air, a supposed air. Somebody had one for like ten grand on there. Tony Lindley says those bears were creepy looking. Yeah, those books were definitely kind of weird. That was like before the age of goosebumps, when uh, people were still producing wholesome things, I guess. So card values rise all the time due to natural disasters. Yeah, that, that definitely is true. Steve Balboni just got his Desert Shield card to add to the binder the other day. John Smoltz, Doug Jones. Dave West, Brumley, Hubie Brooks, 
Chris, is those people that say Berenstain are aliens or something? I never met a person who said that. Thank God. I couldn't agree with you more, man. I definitely agree with that. Louis Polonia, Matt Noakes, and Will Can Boyd. Andrew Jesus and 90 Tops actually look really good in the PSA slabs. I agree with you, man. They definitely do. George Michael from Arrested Development was the voice of Brother Bear. I did not know that. That's interesting. I want to try that gum, but I don't really want to slop in everybody's ear. It looks really good. <laughs> the Berenstein Bears theme song stuck in my head. <laughs> I don't even remember that theme song. Jeff Ballard. There's a nice Conseco. I'm telling you, if you have not watched the Angry Video Game Nerd episode of Berenstein Bears, you got to watch it because it's great. He hasn't really put anything out in a while. Angry Video Game Nerd used to be awesome. And he just he got real busy and just kind of stopped doing it. But if you want something great to watch after this, check out. Just type in AVGN for Angry Video Game Nerd and Berenstein Bears. It is epic. And if you like that one, then you can go down the rabbit hole of Angry Video Game Nerd. Watch Paperboy, watch Bible Adventures, and all those other great videos that he used to make. Edgar Martinez. So many good ones. That guy is a genius. This break brought to you by Zevia. <clears throat> isn't it isn't it always? Grab yourself one. Cause they are the best. It's gonna take me an hour to clean all this crap up <clears throat> left behind from all this gum. Alright, let's see what else we can find besides a checklist. Mackie Sasser. Tony S. has a couple of those Frank Thomas rookie cards. I would hang on to them. Merrill Cunningham, Berto Alomar, Carlton Fisk. <laughs> Brought to you by Bud Light tonight. Nice. Mike Devereaux, Armstrong, Ron Hassey, Jody Davis, Kramer, Fred Tolliver. What's the air in the 90 Donruss Nolan Ryan card? I have like six of them. That's, is that statistical? I know he's got an air in 90 upper deck. But I can't think of one with 90 Donruss. Sandberg on top for Craig B, who just recently retired and left us. Kevin Hickey looking exactly like Kurt Schilling. i got to put this card in the background because this card is identical to Schilling. If we see a Schilling, we can compare them. Jose Rio, Ninja Gaiden one is great, or Atari Spider-Man. The AVGN episodes is definitely are great. Bruce Hurst, Claudio Washington. Avaro Espinosa for Reindeer Studios. Night on Rust is a Glavin Smoltz card. That is definitely one air Night on Rust, the Diamond Kings. It's a cool one, too. It really has no value to it, but I remember having that when I was a kid. I'm still trying to cross some of those lesser known airs off my list. I like the more uh, interesting ones. I don't really go after the statistical errors so much. Spanky LaValier. Tom Pagnozzi. Hey, that's what it is. The MVP card, not Diamond Kings. Neil Heaton, there's Barry Bonds. This one's off center. We did see an Edgar Martinez a little bit ago. Bankhead. Kirk McCaskill. He actually has an error card that was corrected in Night on Rust. Oh, Mike Flanagan. Pack Tabler. And a sweet vintage top shirt. And what else we got left? Got like a dozen packs left. Find ourselves a Greg Jeffries Gold Cup card. Even like stuff like this, PSA 10 would be like, I don't know, probably 40 or 50 bucks. Puck it. People like that card for nostalgia reasons. Matt Williams, Eric Anthony. Melito Perez for Jonathan H. RJ Reynolds, Henry Cotto, and Maguire Galassi. What set is a Maguire batting average here? That would be 91 tops. It's like the, uh, I think it's a slugging percentage. I want to say decimal point. Finally found a Keith Comstock, 91 Tops Air with him and the Cubs logo. That's a cool one. I like that one. I got that one in my uh, my Air box. One day I'll do a, a video about my Airs. I'm going to do a video of my Air collection or just Airs in general for a long time. Point out some of the lesser known ones that aren't talked about. Jim Rice, Fred McGriff. I feel like there's a good bit of them that um, people aren't aware of that I'd like to bring to light. Marcus Lawton, 
Maholland, Greg Walker, Don Carmen, and Craig Biggio, second year card of him. As we trudge on, one Frank Thomas so far and one Kurt Schilling imposter. We've got to find the one true Kurt Schilling and compare it because they are identical. I'm pretty sure they just took Kurt Schilling and like airbrushed a must mustache on on him and put Kevin Hickey. It's creeping me out. I did get the uh, the Mark Witten air from 91 Tops, which is such a weird error card because there's so many other cards in 91 Tops where like phalanges or like other things, objects are going over uh, the border. So his hand over the border, I don't, I don't really understand why that's such a big deal. If you look through 91 Tops, I'm sure you'll find a bunch of cards where, you know, batting gloves and bats and everything else are going over borders. So I don't know why they made such a fuss about that card, but it is, uh, it's pretty rare. They corrected it pretty early on. I just don't really know why they corrected it. Bill Landrum and Raphael Belliard, one of the worst Pirates players of all time. I think so, at least. He used to love the Pirates and used to hate him. <laughs> so what does that tell you? Maybe it'll come out of the last pack. You never know. And I, th I think I'm going to start doing this series on the first of each month. So if you can't get enough of 90 Tops... Then you want to tune in on that day. Keith Hernandez, just watching a Seinfeld episode with him on it recently. Alex Sanchez. Smiths and Randy Bush. Not seeing a whole lot of stars out of this box, though. Mel Hall. Paul Kilgis. Ronnie Paulino is probably worse. What about Al Padrique? Al Padrique is probably worse, too. I know I shouldn't say that. I might, you might smite me. And we're down to the last seven packs in our search for another Griffey, Randy Myers, Mookie Wilson. They could be all hiding in the last few packs. Kevin Tappany, Bobby Thigpen, Billy Ripken. His cards have all gone through the roof, too. All the error variations and whatnot. There's Ryan Sandberg. <laughs> Al Padrique is the best Pirates player ever. Screw Berto Clemente. Steve Lake. Some sort of uh, ancient rainforest dance. Am I still in the hunt for Dale Murphy reverse negative? I definitely am still in the hunt for it because I uh, I bought that one off eBay that was advertised as an original and it ended up being a freaking reprint. I couldn't tell from the photos on there because of the way the card was. Like, they look legit until it doesn't move at all. There's no hologram. Also, another thing on the reprints is the jersey is a different color. So, skeptical to buy those, but, I mean, if you buy... A phony one, you'll get your money back. It's just a pain, but those gone those have gone up too. Before they were around like forty bucks. Now it seems like they're like double that. But as is life in the hobby with everything going up and to the point where people are standing in lines for cards. Mark Gardner, Future Stars. Got screwed over with an eighty vending box. That sucks, man. Sandy Koufax, Tim Leary, Steve Farr. What kind of, what uh, brand was it from the 80s? Huff. Paul Gibson. Creepy card. Terry Francona. Mitch Williams. Lee Smith. Hey, Red Light, what's up, man? And then there were five. Chris says, you'd be proud to Jay is my wife has introduced my son to the real ghost. But that's sick, man. That is awesome. I definitely am proud to hear that. If I ever decided to have a kid, it would only be so that I could uh, introduce them to DuckTales and Real Ghostbusters and Chippendale and Motu and Thundercats and all of those great shows, Cops, Batman the Animated Series, Gargoyles, Tommy Lasorda, Rest in Peace, Jeff Reardon, Rob Dibble, Junior Ortiz, Ballard, and Rick Sutcliffe in that sweet Tops magazine with Conseco. Four packs left. Not seeing a whole lot out of this box. I still have four boxes left, so I am stocked up for a while. Went panic shopping, so instead of... Uh, everyone ran out and bought toilet paper. I ran out and bought 90 tops. And not to use this toilet paper to open to find this card. <laughs> Carney Lansford. Larry Walker, rookie. 
That's one we forgot to mention earlier. I feel like it often can get overlooked in this set. Nice one, though. Walker Rookie. You'll put that in the background. Yeah, PSA grading prices have gone nuts, man. Dave Winfield. And it's driving the prices of all the boxes up. And I don't know uh, when that's going to subside at all, or if it will. Jose Lean looking like... Uh, that might have been some sort of New Age Air Ash Wednesday parallel. Craig Lefferts. Brent Saberhagen. <laughs> Paul L says, how dare you skim by John Wathen? I did that on purpose to see if someone would notice. We have to pay homage to the late and great John Wathen. Even though he's still alive, I didn't want to make it seem uh, very epic. Jerry Brown. Rock Reigns and Jeff Reed. CNM says, I introduced my six-year-old daughter to Voltron, the good one of the line, and then she decided to watch the one with the cars, and we all talk now. It's a good reason I'll talk to your daughter. I approve of that. And it'd be the same thing, too, if uh, your daughter would rather watch the new MacGyver instead of the old one. It would be, if that were my kid, they'd be moving out a lot uh, sooner than 18. Gene Larkin, Johnny Bench, Turn back the clock. NCJ says Larry was good. I saw him play twice. Big dude. <laughs> Joe B says Brittany's still in here. I, I don't know. Mike Stanley. That's a creepy car to him. Pete Incavilla and Nolan Ryan. It's about time we saw one of these. I feel like they're usually littered throughout boxes. 5,000 Ks. Kurt Wilkerson. Marty Peavy. Browning. Chris Carpenter. Art Howe. Still no sign of Scott Scudder. I told you it's a short print. Leonard Tettleton. The point and Guterman, bless her, she is. My son plays with all my old mass toys. That's sweet, man. Yeah, those mass toys. I don't really ever come across those. The final two packs. I might just not even clean this up. I might just leave this like this for tomorrow's video. Adds a little wintry effect. And then, uh,. Maybe we'll have things organized tomorrow and give those cards away. <laughs> Here's Gibby, Don Robinson, Kenny Rogers, McClure, Honeycutt, Davey Johnson, Jeff Coat, Treblehorn. Chris and Chris says, you love tomorrow night. Tony Gwynn, yeah, tomorrow will be, uh, what, episode number 96 of Turn Back to Clock Tuesday. Get near the end, and I'm sure everyone is very excited to... Be done with that once and for all. But I'll still do random rips here and there. Whenever I find boxes that I think are good prices, that, you know, would be fun to rip, I'll buy them up. And maybe even cases here and there, do like mixers or whatever. Every once in a while. It won't be every week, though. Art Howell and Nolan Ryan Poster. So the final pack. I'm looking for Kevin Hickey. Maybe I should do this like all ASMR style. Kevin Hickey's. Uh, Twin, Kurt Schilling, and I guess we're not going to find it. I wish I had that card sitting next to me. Normally, I do have everything sitting next to me, but it doesn't seem like it in this case. Hey, Hunter, what's up, man? Mike Smith. Here's a Mike Smith subscriber that was in here a little bit ago. Joe B., thanks, man. Joe B., our celebrity in the house. Randy Kutcher, Wade Boggs. First time seeing him in his box. Eric Hansen, Steve Carter, Otis Nixon, Gedman, Seitzer. I'm more of a scale. Eddie Murray. Felder. There's that Mandela effect again. Frank DePino. And Dave Gallagher looks on as we hang our heads in defeat and shame yet again. Another month and another 90 tops box. Without Frank Thomas, no name on front. But we will continue on. We will live to fight another day and find this card someday. But we did pull one, and we did pull that Griffey that... Oh, there it is. Nice Griffey, nice Walker, nice Frank Thomas. And Juan Gonzalez and Sosa got lost among this awful, nasty mess. But that is all I have for you tonight. I appreciate you guys joining me on this quest. We will continue to do this every month until that card surfaces or until these boxes are depleted entirely. But tomorrow night we'll be opening some of the flashy 95 Pinnacle Zenith looking for Hideo Nemo rookie card. And we will rejoice like it's 1995 when we pull it. And we'll also be looking for these three-tier chase program. Insert Z-Team rookie roll call 
All Star Salute. This is actually a real 24 karat gold box that these come in, so you're not going to want to miss out on this. It's going to be epic, and it's going to be tomorrow night at 8:30. Once again, I appreciate you guys watching. Have a great rest of your evening. Hopefully, I'll see you all tomorrow night.